Hey guys, this is Jessica and Noam here at Rackstrax Recording with Reverb. We're here for another episode of What's That Sound? And today we are exploring how you get the drum sounds you hear in the Flaming Lips fight test. It is a really weird drum sound. It's one of the weirder drum sounds of the decade. It's a classic Dave Fridman drum sound. There is very little information online on how they did it, so we're gonna figure it out. The drummer on this track is Steven Draws, and to approximate his sound, we used a Gretsch kick drum, a Pearl Chad Smith signature snare, and K Zildjian dark hats. To add length to the kick, we put a fiber skin head on the front, and then we shortened the sound by putting pillows and blankets resting against either side. So the hi-hat was a little bit too loud, but Noam had a key ingredient to help us get a much softer sound. What was that, Noam? Keys. keys. It was my keys. keys. I stuck my keys in the hi-hat, it was my yeah. keys. Uh, keys in the hi-hat is a trick that helps reduce the volume of the hi-hat a little bit. It dampens it with the weight of the keys um, and like w the way that that changes the sound um, it is then counteracted by the fact that the keys are rattling around a little bit in there, so it adds a little bit of that brightness back, and you end up with like a pretty well-balanced hi-hat sound. All right, so for this sound, we did not have a lot to go off of, right? There wasn't a lot of information on the internet to tell us what to do. So all we could do was listen to it and try to figure out what characteristics we could hear and what we could use to achieve that. So we knew that this sound um, felt very cohesive. It felt congealed. It felt like it was from very few mics, right? It didn't feel like a typical like rock drum sound where it's like the snare is separate and this is separate and separate. It all felt like one thing, right? So we knew we were gonna use very few mics. We knew that it was super crunchy, so there was something that's causing distortion in some way. Um, and we also knew that it was pretty compressed, so we had to compress it in some way as well. Past that, we were guessing, and we just tried a bunch of different placements, different mics. Uh, where we landed was a single mic that picked up almost the entirety of, of the drum sound, and then a supplemental mic that was just on the kick drum that was adding a little bit of extra punch and low end. For the kick drum mic, we used an iFET, right, which is basically a FET 47 condenser mic. For the main mic, we used an AKG C12 VR. We just moved it around the room. We just walked around the room and just listened, right, and listened to how the kick was changing as we moved and listened to how the snare was changing, the pitch, the length, all the characteristics that we wanted to kind of dial in. And we ended up just sticking it in a place that was like five feet away and it was off to the left, but it happened to be where the kick drum felt like it was really good length and the snare drum had a really good balance to it and the hi-hat wasn't too loud. And that ended up being almost the entirety of our drum sound. Once we got this drum sound all processed and, and put together and we listened to the original, what we noticed was that ours was a little bit duller and a little bit less lively than theirs. So to combat that, we took our big baffles that we have in our live room and on one side we have absorption on them, which is usually what we use to kind of control the drum sound. On the other side we have hardwood, right? Uh, super reflective, super bright. So all we did was flip those baffles around uh, and they gave a ton of extra energy and a ton of extra brightness and length to all these drums that made it perfect. All right, so let's listen to each mic. I'm gonna start with the main mic, which was our C12 VR. So this already sounds pretty cool. We are doing some processing on the way in. We are running this through a distressor uh, and that's with a medium, uh, medium to slow attack and a really fast release. Um, and that is just crunching our drum. It's adding energy. It is adding a bunch of uh, excitement. It's also adding a lot of control. Uh, after that, we are going into a decapitator 
in Pro Tools, right? And that's just to add a little bit of extra distortion. And we are going into an SSL channel also in Pro Tools just to add a little bit of extra, extra distortion. We also added a pull tech and that is adding some high end and adding some low end uh, to the sound as like a finishing touch. Now, this sound alone is not the entirety of what we did with that mic. We also split that mic into a separate signal and that we wanted to run through some kind of distortion that was gonna be in parallel, right? Now we wanted it in parallel because this sound was gonna be majorly screwed up and we did not want that to be the entirety of the sound. We just wanted the character of that without ruining all of our impact, without ruining all of our low end, without ruining all of our dynamics. Uh, we could retain that while using the dry signal and then adding just a little bit of this distortion. Now what we used for distortion was really unique. We used a $150 graphic equalizer, right? This is a Ashley brand graphic EQ. It is typically used in high school gymnasiums all over uh, the globe to make terrible sounding speaker systems sound a little better. It also happens to distort really, really easily and that is why we like it, right? So. We took all the channels of the graphic EQ, cranked them up to 10, and then we started carving away frequencies that were causing problems, right? We started shaping the sound. That EQ is before the distortion, right? It's feeding into the distortion. So it's not just like taking a distorted sound and EQing it afterwards, right? It's like putting an EQ into a distortion pedal or something like that, where you can really shape how much harmonic distortion is happening at every frequency. And that is ended up being like half of the sound of this this drum sound was just that channel distorted to hell with this with this EQ. Let's take a listen to just the dry first. So here is just our C12 VR. It's not bad on its own, right? It, it, it definitely works on its own. Let's check out the distorted EQ version. I don't know what it is about this record, but everything feels very cartoonish to me in it, right? I think this is contributing a lot to that. So here's them together. It sounds great, but it needs a little bit of extra something in the low end, right? We're getting a surprising amount of low end just from our, our single mic, but I think we need a little bit more punch. So let's check out our kick drum mic. This is a really classic chain. It is a FET 47 going through a Neve and it is getting a little bit of distressor as well, uh, just, to, just to control it and make sure it's got enough punch. Um, it's not a remarkable kick drum sound on its own. However, we did our same trick with our Ashley Graphic EQ. Let's take a listen to that. Not only is that so much cooler of a drum sound, but that also is contributing a lot to the snare sound, right? It has some really interesting character because it's so distorted. All of the things that are within that drum sound, it brings them all to the surface. And there happens to be a lot of snare bleed in that uh, as well. And it kind of sounds great. So we're gonna, we're gonna roll with it. So let's listen to just the dirty version of this. So this is just our two mics going through our Ashley EQ. It's a very unique sound. It's not the most impactful sound. It's not the biggest sound, but it's very, very unique and very like character forward. Um, let's listen to just the clean sounds. Much, much more uh, like impact, much more fidelity, much more of, of all the things that make it feel big, but it's missing a little something. It's like not quite that interesting. So. Let's add in our dirty mics. Best of every world. Let's check it all out together.
That was the two mic drum sound for the Flaming Lips fight test. Let us know in the comments what other sounds you'd like to see us break down and we will see you next time.